Good morning, Eric here with another video for the series for Predator Files. Uh, this is a uh, two Predator 3500 watt generators that I'm running together with a uh, paralleling uh, cord uh, for my 50 amp service on my fifth wheel. So the two generators with their two and a quarter uh, gallon tanks running at 50% load uh, can run the, you know, will run that generator uh, for, or the, the generators for approximately 10 hours, according to the manufacturer. Now, um, if I'm in a warm area and I'm using both air conditioners and we're using other things in the, the camper, I'm not exactly sure how long that's going to last. I, I don't have um, any experience yet with that. Uh, we're going to find out this season. But I wanted to have the flexibility of connecting the generators and running them and being able to run them for extended period of time uh, without having to stop to refuel them or, you know, worry about running out of fuel in the middle of the night uh, or, or something like that. So what this does is allows me to essentially run as long as I want. Um, the neat part about this is that since this is gravity feeding from an external fuel tank, uh, which right now is a three gallon tank, um, I, I can change that. It could be a five, it could be a six gallon tank. I, you know, I could get nuts with that. Um, but uh, right now it's a three gallon tank. Uh, I can fill that three gallon tank uh, away from the generators. I, I never have to stop them uh, in order to refuel, of course. We all know the safest way to refuel a generator or anything else that uses gasoline is to stop it first. <laughs> but um, there are those of us who will challenge safety and go ahead and refuel it while it's running or uh, anyway. So anyway, we're going to be safe. So now I can refuel the, the spare tank that I'm gravity feeding off of and never have to shut off the generators, never have to take the, the gas caps off of the, the, the generators while they're running, and I can just let it go. So what is this made of? Uh, there are two universal or Atwood universal fuel line kits here, uh, and I sacrificed one in order to make this. So the fuel cap end that you see here is the short ends that are on the uh, downstream side of the bulb. So you can see an arrow right here. And what I did for this one is, if you look at this portion of it, uh, this side of the line to here, there's a fairly long section of uh, fuel line. I left that alone. This side right here, coming off of the bulb, is a shorter, uh, and I would say it's less than two feet, but that's where that comes from. So I cut this one off of this one, and on a second hose, cut this one off of it. And then attach this to a valved Y and then took the long section of tubing off the other bulb and took that end off and put that here on this side and then ran that into uh, the outlet here of the bulb. So end from the fuel tank into the bulb which siphons the fuel in this line into the Y and then out of the Y to the caps that go onto the Predator 3500. The caps, I got both of these caps off of eBay uh, from a distributor MRI underscore Denver. Uh, I'm not plugging any particular distributor, but that one, uh, it's $56.95, which is pricey, but the cap... Uh, is made in the USA. It works. Uh, comes with a nice uh, cap gasket in there. No fuss, no muss. I, I did get one off of uh, Amazon. The sidewall was too thick. It didn't screw on there properly. Had a whole bunch of review issues. Uh, I don't want to mess around with that stuff. If I want to do something, I want to order it, get the right thing, get the right thing the first time, and be done with it. And I got the right product that I needed from MRI underscore Denver on eBay. So anyway, so two fuel caps. Uh, these are uh, replace the regular caps 
that are on the Predator. Uh, I save those and set those aside because if I'm using a single generator, I want to use those, those uh, regular plastic caps. And I have both of the generators in the back of my uh, F350 dually. They fit uh, one on the left, one on the right. And I use straps to tie them down so they're there when I need them. Uh, the universal uh, fittings, the connector right here, has a little gray push button. You can see that moves. That moves this locking ring in and out of the way. That locking ring fits on the male side right down into this slot right here. And it's also, you notice, it's gasketed right here. The... The line on the inside has a valve. So when you put this fitting onto the male fitting right here, this top part of the male fitting depresses that valve and allows the fuel to flow into the cap. So that's one safety uh, feature right there. So if you disconnect this while there's fuel in it, you're not going to spill fuel out of the line. Another thing, uh, what I did was, since this is connected right now the fuel line is open so having these valves right here shuts the fuel off uh, and won't let it go uh, won't let any more spill out of this line if there was any in it right now there's there's no fuel I've uh, uh, in working with this thing it's the one that I had that I've used before uh, has been emptied of fuel so there that is you know all assembled so I can shut one side off or the other or or shut both off uh, and then disconnect the caps if I shut those valves and I give it you know a minute or two the fuel that's in this line is going to end up uh, in the fuel tank for the generator and then I can just unscrew this cap the cap will spin on this I don't know if you can see that or not the cap will spin while connected so I can unscrew it off the, the generator and then I can just pull the whole fuel assembly away uh, without shutting the generators off if I wish. So that's a nice little feature. So how do you, how do you build this up properly? The, the uh, crimps that are on here are PEX crimps, PEX shark bite print uh, crimps. If you haven't used those before or you don't know what they that is, you, uh, it's kind of a common thing anymore. I'm sure uh, maybe you've heard of it. Or heard somebody you know, speak of it at one point. This is a shark bite uh, crimp right here. So it kind of looks like a a ring with you know maybe a you know a crude diamond on top of it. Uh, they come in packs of twenty five. The ones that you need for this are are half inch. That's that's what I have here, and I'm going to get those out of the way. So these crimps, in order to do this with a hose you you need to get the crimp off so this is a little bit of a process and uh, but knowledge is is power so if we look closely at this crimp you'll see that there is a tab right here and that's bent over a little bit to the right so using a pair of needle nose pliers if you get one tip of that needle nose pliers on the right hand side of this tab and then on the left hand side of this and you squeeze that carefully you're going to bend that back up um, and two of the three that I went after the tip of that actually just broke off it's stainless steel it doesn't like to flex back and forth so that snapped off and then I was able to get a small screwdriver underneath the tail end of that ring and pry it up and when you pry it up it comes loose and you can see kind of what we're, we're dealing with here we got some slots some bumps so when that crimp crimper starts clamping down on this um, it snugs this ring down it's got an outer outer sleeve and an inner sleeve and it allows it just to clamp down tightly uh, on the hose which is clamping down tightly on the barb and it, they do a really nice job. Here's a completed one right there. And you can see there's a larger one that the manufacturer uh, used to uh, crimp the bulb onto uh, the barb, which is the white section that's right here. Uh, it steps down to a, I think that's a 3 8 inch hose. So, um, 
anyway, you get the the barb off, or not the barb, the crimp off, and then the waste piece of hose has got to come off. I use a utility knife just to slice this down the length of it uh, in order to slip it off because now that crimp, and you can see how it is, it is really pressed down on that. There's an imprint of where that was. Trying to slide that off the barb is, is very difficult. It does, it does not want to go, which is good. So using a screwdriver, pry the end up, loosen that, that crimp, and then slide a new one on and get it in position. I was careful when I redid these is to kind of line these up. So I don't have, they're, they're not sharp, but I mean, if you, maybe if you catch them the right way, uh, they wouldn't feel very good. So I, you know, keep them in the same alignment. Uh, so put a new one on and then crimp it in place. Uh, you have to use, uh, if they're going to be crimped properly, uh, the crimping tool. And this is probably the most expensive thing <laughs> of this. Here's the, uh. Let me see here if I can focus in here. There is the PEX clamp. That's the number. And it works very, very well. Uh, but this crimp right here, that's about 70 bucks. Um, and I've used this uh, four times. Three times on this hose. Oh, excuse me, four times on this hose. And once on a repair of some PEX in my fifth wheel. Um, and, and that's... That's it. So I guess, you know, the more you <laughs> use it, you know, I guess it's paying for itself over a period of time. But if you don't use or you don't use a lot of PEX or you don't do a lot of shark bite crimping, um, that's pretty expensive. Maybe there is a place where uh, you can uh, rent one for an hour or look around. Maybe a friend or a friend of a friend has one. Um, I've let, you know, people know that um, I'm friends with or family, uh, know that I have one of these. If they need it, they can borrow it. Uh, and there you are. So, um, crimp everything down. Um, and here's kind of the, uh, finished product. So this allows me to have the fuel tank a good distance away. In this case, it's about six, seven feet away from the generators while they're running. Uh, the Y and the split here allows me a good distance between the generators. Uh, that was one thing that I ended up running into with the paralleling kit, uh, which was a 30 amp, uh, dual 30 amp connectors that feed a 50 amp um, RV connector. The two 30 amp ends that would plug into the outlet of the generators are actually too close together. So I had to make adapter cables to give a little bit of space. Um, and other word, in other words, if I didn't, uh, there was just too much stress on the, uh, the plugs. But I'm going to put all that stuff together. I'm going to have the generators running with the paralleling uh, kit and the gravity feed fuel line. This, I'll have this all set up so uh, you can get a, an idea how it works. Now, I'm not going to be using this thing all the time. What I'm shooting for in doing this sort of thing is to have the flexibility to be able to do uh, or essentially go wherever it is that you know, I want to go. I don't necessarily have to go to a campground to have power. Um, and in this case, because of what I have set up now with batteries and with generators uh, and soon uh, solar, uh, I'm not dependent on being at a campground for, for power. I can I, I will have uh, the power that I need, uh, for whatever I need, uh, for as long as I need it, which is kind of cool. Uh, so the next step, uh, after, um, all of this is to get the upgraded inverter installed and the batteries. I have a decent bank of batteries, uh, 10, uh, absorbent glass mat, 110 amp hour, 12 volt batteries. There's, as I said, 10 of them. Um, that's a lot of wattage. Uh, I think in the neighborhood of 13,400 watts, somewhere right around in there. Um, it's a lot of weight too. So I have to, I'm going to have to shore up the front storage compartment so that it can support the weight 
Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use all 10. It may not be necessary to use all 10. Um, but uh, the next project will be battery installation, inverter installation, uh, charge controller installation with a Renogy 30 amp uh, battery controller, wires um, from solar panels to the charge controller, battery monitor, uh, and a battery cutoff switch. Now, uh, there's already some material that's in there. I've got a, I have a fuse, a 2000 watt inverter, and a bunch of battery cable that I'm already using right now. I just want the extra um, power and flexibility. So, all right. I don't want to get too far off the subject. There we are. A uh, fuel line for dual Predator 3500 watt generators with the gravity feed caps using PEX uh, half inch shark bite clamps and crimper. Ta da.